Good morning, folks. While we do have one buoy in event mode here, it's only about 12 inches deviation. Regarding 53046 to the west, the one we're concerned about, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology says it's malfunctioning. Well, I wonder what they mean by that. Is the 2,000 feet of seafloor rise an error, or is the machine now malfunctioning and that's why we've lost the feed? I wouldn't buy the first one as an explanation, not with this area already cluttered with detectors before adding the new one this year. With the old one showing anomalies leading up to the addition of the new detector and this the zone of the tectonic breakup, tough to believe it'd be an error. North Atlantic, you see the spinning Raphael remnants. It's a big low pressure system headed for Europe, but because of the spin, front edge brings warmer southern air up over the area first. Locals, you can see where the showers are headed. Tropical Storm Watch looks a bit different today, focused on the Atlantic, and the models have little consistency in the forecast tracks. Australia with the cold front creeping over the southwest coast, while New Zealand unable to escape the Antarctic low, and as you can see, folks up north are in for a bit more heat. This weekend should be mostly benign in the U.S. If anything, the wind map shows where the air converges at the low pressure minimums. Could bring some warm air up to the Midwest east through Pennsylvania by tonight or tomorrow. Folks, we had a 6.6 .6 hit Vanuatu, USGS downgraded to a 6.2. We also had a 5.3 in California, which is scarier, although smaller. Scariest, however, was multiple 5-pointers striking anywhere near Iceland. Sleep, baby Katla. Good girl. Southwest Caribbean had a few tremors as well. Instability above our heads too, this is three days ago where the left side shows coronal hole impact. Took a break but the right shows enduring resonance picked back up as a result of moderate density increasing as the speed died down. We have reverberated non-stop for three straight days, at least there has been no solar plasma penetration of our shields. Virtually no instability in the overall field strength, just those induced resonances and another day of F1 critical frequencies that make you say, oof, this is real. So quakes, magnetics, and yeah. Solar flares, we got the trifecta. An M9 flare was captured by multiple satellites, but get this, yet again it came from behind the limb. Sunspot not yet on the Earth facing disk. We do have some larger sea flares popping out as it crests, but let's take a look at these active regions taking over the eastern limb. Many small umbra around the larger umbra and mixed magnetics. I'll take a stab in the dark and say both solar flares and earthquakes may see an uptick over the coming days. Mercury is heliocentrically opposing Venus with Ceres and Jupiter conjoining as Venus sees it. Mars is actually lined up pretty nicely with Pluto at the moment and we're not done. Atmosphere turned off on Stellarium so we can see Saturn set to geocentrically conjoin the Sun in a few days. Just after that, Mars will geocentrically oppose Jupiter and a day after that we have the full moon. Last Saturn alignment was the great Indonesian tectonic breakup. Last four have seen big quakes, five of six, nine of 11, and 13 of 16. Earthquake and flare watches on, eyes open. No fear, it's just past 6 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.